I go to negative one. Okay. Hey everyone, this is Corbin. I bring you another standard match. So today we are going to be taking a look at Shoujo Doji and we're going to be seeing how it stacks up against a very old deck in the meta that of course being Prison, Seraph Snow, whatever you want to call it, um, which I think has the opportunity to be a very interesting matchup for a couple of reasons that I'm sure I'll definitely detail uh, throughout the match I, unless I forget, you know, there's always that option. Uh, anyways, we do have Prison going first, you know, kind of where Prison does want to be going. Uh, they need to get that turn 4 first. Uh, it's always very much appreciated. Uh, because unlike a lot of the other grade 4 decks, uh, it cannot actually ride into grade 4 on turn 3, even if it goes second. So just always going first is just better for Prison. Also, this interaction, you don't have to commit anything from board. You can just rest your Vanguard in order to set up your Prison. Uh, but moving over to Shoujo Doji, we do see them discarding an unprecedented there for Ride Deck. And of course, energy charging those three. And then, of course, Grade 1, Shoujo Doji is going to be proccing here. Just checking those top five cards of the deck. One of them is going to be getting uh, put to soul, and the other is going to get bound. So, looks like we only got two real targets there. We got the Kunai, who's going to be going into soul. And then the Iza Sour, who is just going to be put into that bind zone. Uh, definitely fine. I mean, uh, effectively when you're playing Shoujo Doji, both the Bind Zone and the Soul are kind of effectively the same waiting room a lot of the time. Like, you, you, you put the cards from your Soul into the Bind Zone. So basically just putting them into the Bind Zone directly is just skipping a single step. So a lot of times it doesn't really matter. Anyways, we do see a heal trigger being clipped there on that first drive check. Of course, not doing anything since, you know, we didn't just take any damage. Uh, pushing prison to one, just giving that one counter blast. So, uh, gonna be riding in two by discarding the, uh, what, what was I calling her? I was calling her like Citrine Yellow or something. Or was I calling her Tangerine Yellow? I don't remember. I give her a funny name. It's wildly off. Um, and uh, surprisingly, I don't think anyone actually, like, called me out on it. So, I might end up doing it again. Anyways, we see Prison also being able to do that hand rip, ripping out a critical trigger from the hand there, getting nothing off of the drive check. Now, of course, Prison hand rip isn't quite exactly the same as Shoujo Doji, um, you know, hand rip. They do have technically, there are technically ways you can cycle your Prison for, like, cards from the drop zone, but those cards are effectively not very good. So, once again, riding into the grade 2 Shoujo Doji here, we have, it looks like we just have... Well, te technically we have four options, but only like two of them are actually viable. We got the Kinran, we have the PG who is also stealth, and then of course we do actually also have the Suku Su Suku Yodashi, um, who is going to be getting uh, called out. And I think we're doing things a little bit incorrectly here. I could be mistaken, but I believe the card goes to the soul and not the bind zone when you ride it. Um, I'll have to double check that. Um, but interesting that we call this Suko Yodashi. I guess we just wanted some extra pressure here. But just swinging it in. Going to be hitting into an over trigger there at the first damage. Um, not really the greatest. Like, you don't want to be hitting your over triggers like this early on in um, against the show. Judge match. You really prefer to be a more impactful turn. Especially since this wasn't really a very good, good uh, you know, rush turn here. And I did double check on that. Uh, Shoujo Doji, I was correct. That Kinran should very much not be in Bind Zone right now. Um, but what we should have done is called the Kinran. Um, maybe behind Vanguard, although that's like very bad. And then just put the uh, Suko Yodashi into the soul and then it would have bound itself. That's probably why we get, got messed up on that because we were thinking, oh, the Suko Yodashi is going to bind itself anyway. So, uh, you know, this does the same thing. But anyways... Minor misplay aside, we're going to be riding into the uh, Grade 3 Seraph Snow here. Only one Counter Blast, but it doesn't really matter. Like, unless unless the uh, the opponent calls a uh, full board, you realistically don't really need more than one Counter Blast. Uh, effectively, like on your first Grade 3 turn, as we're going to be seeing here. Calling down the... Uh, I already missed the name. It just popped up there. Citrine Yellow. Whatever it's called. By... Uh, gonna be... I almost said Binding. Imprisoning the... Um, the Unprecedented from the Drop Zone. And then gonna be calling this Little Royale. 
okay, <laughs> to imprison the Tsukiyo Dachi. Um, definitely not terrible for Shoujo Doji because you can technically call these back. But the biggest problem is that, um, as we're seeing here, that is going to be eating up some of the resources uh, from Shoujo Doji. And um, I know I haven't released my How to Beat yet. It is on the way. I'm currently still working on it. The script is finished, so then we'll get that out soon. But anyways, like I was saying, uh, something that I mentioned in that video is that... Uh, Shoujo Doji doesn't really have access to a lot of extra resources. So like, yeah, you can commit a counter blast called two things from prison, but you know, that counter blast, counter blast goes a long way in Shoujo Doji. Like that's a, that's a full on is a sour search. You could check top five, add one. You could put two things from the bind zone into the drop zone, give your entire front row 5k or uh, what's the other thing that lets you CB. There's one other thing, but I, I, I'm forgetting it right now. Oh yeah, of course, multi-attacking. Um, all that requires CB, and then if you're committing those resources, you know, to, uh, you know, get your resources back, which you kind of need, because, uh, Shoujo Doji needs to have a board in order to actually do anything, and then just not being able to have a board, uh, because all your cards got gobbled up by the prison, uh, makes things very difficult here. Gonna be drive checking a double heal trigger, unfortunately both of them are gonna be whiffing, of course, but that is still an extra 20k to that, um, Whatever her name is, Pristine Aqua, I don't care anymore. Um, and that is also going to be a Battle Door, although it is at 38, so that's probably a two-card guard anyway, unless you're PGing it. Um, but I think you would probably just double 15k shield here anyway. Um, and then, of course, the other resource that you could be committing to imprison uh, or un-imprison, release your, your boys from from the, the Slammer, the Soul, also not a great thing for Shoujo Doji because... A lot, you, you have to consider the fact that in order to actually, you know, set up the Shoujo Doji skill, you do technically have to effectively Soul Blast 3. Like, it's not as bad as Soul Blasting because you're putting um, your resources into uh, the place where you can get them back anyway. But the, the fact that you do need at least 3 cards in Soul, and wouldn't you know it, uh, Prison happens to be the one deck that can actually rip Soul out. Um, so definitely... Going into that pure light is going to be a little bit of a nightmare uh, for Shoujo Doji in this matchup. So we do see the one counter blast being committed here, calling out the Unprecedent and the Tsukuyo Dachi. Um, interestingly enough, not using the Unprecedent skill here might have been okay because remember his skill procs whenever he's called by card ability, and of course, unimprisoning is a card ability, so you could theoretically do that. But there is definitely some logic to not doing it because, like I said, you do need a lot of soul. Um, for things like the grade one grade two to call them back and then of course you do need soul for some other things that i'm not remembering right now um but in any case obviously you need to be able to bind three which we're going to be doing here eb3 binding three cards from draw from the bind zone as you can see we're already down to just one card left in soul gonna be binding um honestly like i don't think there's a great bind target here because literally both of those cards have a lot of advantage if you let them get them back in hand that's basically you're just giving them another two free cards into prison so i think in that situation you probably would have wanted to imprison the grade one and then maybe the grade two so they can't intercept um probably just that uh especially since that grade two the citrine yellow as i call her does technically cost eb3 although you know the benefit of that is that it does give you that extra card draw so if you can't put those cards back in or into the prison then um, things are going to get a little bit scary here. We see Shoujo Doji using their last soul to call out the grade one Shoujo Doji, which definitely does make a lot of sense. Uh, another issue with Shoujo Doji is that it does actually need a lot of board presence, and the deck itself doesn't really make that much advantage inherently. Like, yeah, there's a couple cards that say draw a card, but most of the stuff is like one for ones. And um, the fact that you need to be calling so many things and you have no way of just like raw superior calling um, outside of like the grade one, grade two. Like, yeah, you can have a, a bind zone. You think that's great, but that, that doesn't convert to raw advantage until you swing with the Shoujo Doji, at which point it's, it's already too late because you need to set up your board before you can even get to those cards. So like swing right here, I guess as this example, swing with the Shoujo Doji, you're going minus two and then plus two. So that's technically a neutral. You didn't make any advantage um, from multi-attacking. 
Uh, but speaking of that, Sweden in the Vanguard going to be put calling out the Izo Sour as well as the Kindran from the drop zone. Not going to be guarding this, seeing nothing off of the drive check there, just taking the one damage, swinging the Izo Sour with the Kindran, I suppose, or what are we trying to do here? Yeah, you do have to swing the Kindran. Theoretically, you could call out the Sukiyodashi, but unfortunately, I don't think we saw the grade two that would have allowed us to, you know, give an extra 5k to the, van the front row units. So that means even if we do multi-attack with the Sukiyodashi off this Kindran skill, it's not really going to mean anything considering, you know, it's not going to be able to hit a 13k base Vanguard, which is one of the reasons why Shoujoji does want to be going first a lot of the times. Now, we do actually have the very nasty part of Iza Sour, where he gets to put one card from the Bind Zone back onto the bottom of the deck, uh, which is probably the best way to remove, uh, you know, cards, especially since there are a lot of decks in the meta that can record, uh, you know, cards from drop. So a lot of times, just, like, putting them back in drop is like, okay, whatever, you just effectively retired them. Uh, this last swing, swinging in fact 31, we did put a total of four cards into Soul, so obviously that unprecedented is going to be live here. Um, hitting into a defensive there, but it doesn't really matter. Um... But of course, uh, I think we did. We remember to put the uh, the two cards from our bind zone back into our hand. Uh, but looks like we're gonna be hard riding the pure light here. Not, I guess not having the security upgrade her, gonna having to counterblast the one, and then imprisoning the entire rest of the board, imprisoning two more cards from Soul, and then um, giving Shoujo Doji a taste of its own medicine with two cards ripped directly from the hand. Um, definitely another thing that Shoujo Doji does not really want to, you know, be happening considering, like I said, Shoujo Doji doesn't make a lot of advantage. So being able to just like rip those cards out of hand, even if Shoujo Doji sur survives this, um, which, you know, is kind of a toss up because a pure light turn is still very scary. Um, and I guess you can also consider the fact that, um, another thing that just popped into my head, well, you know, um, the fact that, uh, prison ha does have a lot of border controls. It also does shut down Shoujo Doji's uh, defensive skill. Like most of the time, they're not going to use the defensive skill because, like, whatever, it doesn't come up. Like, who cares? Um, but the fact that it's like completely gone is just really like it makes this matchup that much more worse. Um, so it looks like we imprison another one from the drop. Going to be drawing a card off of our uh, citrine lemon yellow an aid. I don't know whatever these cards are called. Um, we still have one Counter Blast, so effectively we do have four attacks here. Calling out the Aquas, hopefully it wasn't the one that we, you know, bound and then put, didn't put back. Not sure what we did end up putting back. Uh, but that Aquas, I believe we actually bound, bound the second one, so one of the Aquas definitely went back to hand um, there. Um, calling it is going to be just imprisoning another card from drop. And you've got a Battle Door, so you've got four attacks here. Um, I believe we are at prison capacity now, uh, giving the entire front row an extra 15k, and of course that extra critical um, Shoujo Doji with, was that, five cards in hand? Not Things are not really looking that great here, especially since things are going to be getting even more powerful with this first uh, Citrine Yellow Lemonade, whatever her name is. Uh, so we need for 35 already on her own. Wait, is that 35? Oh yeah, because it's plus 25 because it's for every two cards, um, they get an extra 5k. Um, and of course with 10, that is plus 25. Going to be taking that first damage. Definitely, I think the correct play, especially if you don't really have a lot to work with here. Um, unfortunately, not hitting a single defensive there. This Seraph is just going to be pg which is you know definitely the correct play. Um, because this is probably the most dangerous attack and you cannot afford to hard guard this. Uh, we see a critical trigger being flipped onto with that uh, second check there. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put it because these are both two damage. Only three cards left in hand from the Shoujo Doji player. Our only chance of survival realistically is like two PGs, like even an Elementaria does it here since your opponent does have triple drive. They can, you know, you just play an Elementaria for free. But we did already play one PG here and like not being able to have if unless we have that second one things are really looking bad here um actually forgetting to do our third check here but it looks like it's not really gonna matter because those three cards are not gonna save Shoujo doji but that is gonna be the image i hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to do things like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one